Rasulihi al-Kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So I think last night we had a, a whole session about the true meaning of hayat and the true meaning of modesty. How many of you were at last night's session? So I'm not going to repeat myself. <laughs> But essentially, usually when we talk about modesty, we only direct it towards the women, right? And I just wanted to kind of deal with, I guess, in this discussion, since it's an informal discussion, there aren't really any prepared speeches. And in fact, it's kind of funny because the, le the, the lecture that I got, the line that I got, was more directed towards parents, how to raise dedicated uh, Muslim youth uh, in America. But I see that most of you are youth, and I'm not going to sit here and cause uh, friction between you guys because usually whenever I have a topic about parenting or about being a good a good child then naturally there's going to be some imbalance in that and if the crowd is diverse then either I'm going to get a really 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 angry tongue lashing by an uncle at the end of the lecture or there's going to be a kid that's going to come up to me and be like you don't understand right it's going to be one of those two so I'm not going to do all that I'll only say this there's a lot of hypocrisy when we're talking about our definition of hayat and cultural hypocrisy so I'm going to attack the parents a little bit, I'm going to attack the kids a little bit too. Two things here. Number one, the Allah in the masjid, and the Allah in the mass convention, and the Allah in Ilmfast is the same Allah outside of Ilmfast. And that's something that's extremely, extremely, extremely important. Okay? MashaAllah, I can tell the brothers in these conventions, MashaAllah, everyone's looking at their shoes, everyone's looking at each other. And I can see you guys stealing glances here and there and stuff like that. But for the most part, nobody's walking up to the sisters and having a, a detailed and long conversation with them. Even if they know them from outside, outside, you know, in school and whatever it is, or in family gatherings, no one is going up to sisters and talking and having these long conversations outside. Why? Because we're in an Islamic convention. And if you're in the masjid and the, and the sister walks into the masjid and the sister is right in front of you, it's like, oh, stop it. How dare this woman come through the entrance of the masjid? It's like all of a sudden you became Taliban. She should be flogged. <laughs> but then outside, what happens? Or is it that non-Muslim women are more valuable than Muslim women? That women outside, you know, that women that aren't Muslim, women that don't say La ilaha illallah, that don't care, you know, some, and I'm not saying all non-Muslim women don't respect themselves, but women who don't respect themselves are more valuable than the ones that do respect themselves. Right? So first and foremost, it's hitting that hypocrisy and also sisters, MashaAllah, I know everyone when you come to, when you come to the masjid, everyone is Maryam alayhi salam. Everyone is so religious and so pious and... But the point is, is that you have to understand Brothers need to understand, the sisters are not aliens in the masajid and they're not the opposite of, pot, of, of chast women, women outside of the masjid. I'm not going to say any vulgar words, there's too many parents here. Right? But they're not this here and they're not that there. So first and foremost, it's hitting that cultural hypocrisy from our perspective. Secondly, there is a lot of hypocrisy that's embedded in our cultures. And I'm not... And, and, okay. Let me try to do this diplomatically. If you're telling your son or you're telling your daughter that you need to have haya and it's not permissible for you to have a girlfriend, then I don't want you hanging out too much with that girl. But whenever the Eid Milan comes, or the welcome back shaitan party comes, and everybody's hanging around and you're hugging that guy's, you know, his friend's mom and stuff like that, then you look hypocritical. And a lot of times we have to be careful, especially as parents, that we don't present our ideals in ways that are hypocritical. All right, and I'll give you one example, and this is maybe outside of the topic of hayat, but it still applies. And this is what, this is what I want you all to say, you know, at least you can, you can draw your own analogies from this. One time I had a really good friend of mine who got caught selling drugs. And when he got out of prison, his dad brought him, brought him to me and stuff like that. And he's like, talk to him. And it was really awkward because it was a childhood friend. Right? It's like, you know, talk to him and, and give him the magical touch. Like the Holy Spirit that's going to make him religious all of a sudden and stuff like that. And explain to him why what he was doing was wrong. And while I'm talking to him, he goes, dude, Omar, hold on. Is selling alcohol not the same as selling weed? And his dad goes, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. That's illegal. You're the one who went to jail, not me. Yeah, but isn't it just as haram? So because the law of the land 
says that this is legal and this is illegal, all of a sudden that makes you a better person than me? Right? So we need to avoid hypocrisy. And it's funny because a year later, the same guy brought his son, not recognizing priorities. You know, his son is on drugs and stuff like that. And he's sitting there and he's bringing his son to me to talk about music. And his son's like, Dad, you listen to Um Kulthum all day and all night. I've never heard Quran playing in your car. So what's the difference? Right? So making sure we're not hypocritical whenever we present these things to our children is extremely important. But brothers and sisters, just know, you see the way you're acting now? MashaAllah, everyone is so civilized and everyone is keeping their distance. It should not change when you leave. Right? And you shouldn't be extreme here and you shouldn't be extreme there. And the idea is that only brothers need to lower their gaze. Right? But the Prophet ﷺ shattered that one too. When Abdullah ibn Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was a blind man, some of the Sahabiyat were sitting with him. And the Prophet ﷺ came to him and he said, so what are, you, what are you doing? What are you guys doing? He said, oh, he's blind. He can't see us anyway. So the Prophet ﷺ said, are you blind too? You see? So there's hypocrisy from that side. Then there's hypocrisy from the other side. Was there interaction between the Sahaba, the men and the women? Yes, there was. Were there women who went to the masjid to learn and who sought knowledge? Yes. And Islam does not forbid a woman from being assertive because Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, trust me, she was aggressive, but her aggressiveness was a healthy aggressiveness, one that did not contradict her hayat. And that's why she said, Ni'ma nisa nisa al-ansar, lam yamna'uhun al-haya an yatafaqahna fi deen The best women are the women of the Ansar because their sense of modesty did not stop them from learning the deen. Asma bint Abi Bakr, in the famous hadith of Adab al-Qabr, Asma bint Abi Bakr was sitting in the masjid and listening to the Prophet ﷺ speak and the Sahaba started to cry so much that the women could not hear what the Prophet ﷺ was saying anymore. So after, after they finished, she went to the men, this is in Bukhari, saying to them, what was the Prophet ﷺ saying? She didn't go to him with her high heels and stuff like that and her convertible hijab and like walking over there like, hey, what was he saying up there? No, it was respectful. But we cannot be extreme outside and extreme inside. Finding that balance is extremely important and not, not falling for the whole cultural hypocrisy that many of our, many of our parents fall into. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them and to guide them and to guide us, inshaAllah. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. Jad, you have any words? Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah.